Hi guys, this is Priyanka Evangeli, your internet speech language pathologist and in today's video, we are going to see what is functional communication. Are you ready? Before we go into the video, I just want to remind you, make sure you like this video and you are subscribed to this channel so you get a lot more information about how to develop your child's speech language and communication skills within your house. Okay, so let's get into the video. Um, so what is functional communication? In my opinion, functional communication is a bit of a redundant phrase. It's, an, it's like saying the same thing again and again. Because, uh, let's take an example. If I tell you that uh, I went to the cinema theater yesterday. Okay, so you know what is a theater. You know where the theater is. And you know what is a cinema also. So you are telling the same word twice. which But both the words mean the same thing. That you went to a place to watch a movie, right? So that is similar to what functional communication the term means. Um, I'll give you another example. Let's say I'm giving you a forewarning that this video is going to be awesome. Let's just say that, okay? I, if I say that, uh, let's take the word forewarning here. Warning itself means that there is an announcement before something happens. What does for mean? Something before, right? So it's again saying that emphasizing the term before warning, right? It's the same thing again and again. The similar way is what I feel functional communication is. Because if you see, what is communication? Communication is very simple. It's just transferring a message from one person or just from one place to another place. It's function, it's communication. So just a transfer of message. Information transfer is communication. Now, since most of the people on this planet use speech or verbal means of communication, speech is considered the most uh, used and the most understandable form of communication. Apart from speech, there's other non-verbal communication also, like facial expressions, body language, gestures, writing, text, drawing, art forms, all of these are communications too. But since speech is predominant, we all think speech is the best form of communication. Anyway, so this is what communication is. Communication is transferring message. The message can be transferred via speech or via print or other means or even like this through a mobile phone or a video. So, um, this is communication. Now, let's take a step back and think, why do we communicate? Why is there an information transfer? I'm, giving, I'm going to give you a few seconds to think. Okay, I'll tell you, why do we do this? Because every time there is a need, there is some underlying reason for communication to happen. Let's say you are watching TV and an ad pops up or you are watching YouTube and an ad pops up. And what is the purpose of that ad? That ad is also communication. They are giving you a message from somebody somewhere else in the world to you. This is also communication. The purpose of that ad is to make you buy more things or buy a service or buy a product, something like that. Uh, the purpose of this video, what is it? It is for me to tell you what is functional communication as well as for me to warn you a little bit of not to fall prey to when someone tells you we have a new method to teach your child, we will teach your child functional communication training and all these things. Don't fall for it immediately. Take a step back and think or watch my video or recommend my video to someone. Right. So that's, that's the purpose of this video. Also the third thing I want to do with this video is I want to give you some tips that you can do at home with your child to teach them functional communication or just communication, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's that's what I think about functional communication. Functional means there is a reason, there is a use or there is some underlying uh, drive to what is happening. And if you look at communication itself, is functional. There is no dysfunctional communication, there is no uh, functionless communication, there is nothing like that. Communication itself is functional. There is always a reason to every action and every behavior. Most of the people, they may not know the behavior. They may not know the reason. But that does not mean that communication doesn't have any reason. Right? For example, you might have a child who does not communicate much, does not share many things. So just because a child does not share, does not mean they are not communicating. Because they might be still communicating. For example, if you are talking about something of interest, the child's interest, the child just looks there, looks at you and then turns away. This is communication too. This is a behavior. This is an action. 
the child is showing interest but he is not going further and saying I like this or give me that, talk to me about it. This is looking and then turning away. So this is a basic communication form. Now as a therapist or as a parent, we will work on this and we will help the child say, what is that? What are you talking? Uh, tell me, give me. So these kind of phrases we teach them to use in the situation in order to make the other person understand what they are trying to tell. So this is communication training, this is communication therapy, not training, this is communication therapy. This is what we do. Now, again, there is some reason for what the child did. Obviously, it is functional communication only. There is a reason. So in my opinion, saying functional communication is a bit of a redundancy and you can just say communication therapy. That's all. But there are programs I know that say functional communication practice and functional communication something, something. So if you are going to take, go through some training like that or some course like that, just make sure you are, uh, you watch my video or you are well aware of what you are getting into before you do that. Okay, okay. so now that we have covered what is functional communication, let's go into uh, what are the functions of communication. So I am going to give you five functions of communication. So the first one is requesting. What is requesting? Requesting is asking, Mama, I want. Mama, give me. I need this. I want this, I want biscuit, I want milk, I want water, give me toys. So these are requesting, asking for their desires. This is the first uh, form of uh, function of communication. The second function of communication is commands. Commands is telling other people what to do. Mommy come here, daddy go to sleep, uh, Didi go to the room uh, or uh, Anna close the door. So these type of uh, functions is where you, a person tells another person what to do, uh, giving instructions to other people is the second form that is the commands. Now the third form of communication is expressing desire, expressing uh, interest, expressing or sharing interest. So for example saying I like this, do you like this, I like this, I want this, um, I, this I love this very much, so these are the third form of communication that is a third function of communication that is expressing their own desires uh, and their interest with other people. The fourth function of communication, if you have been following my channel and you saw the Ecolalia video of why our children keep repeating utterances, you have also seen these five functions of communication. So it might ring a bell. But anyway, the fourth function of communication, if you have not seen that video, I will link it up here, you can watch it. Now the fourth function of communication is negation or saying, I don't want that. I don't like it. I didn't do it. I don't, this is not mine. Let's not go there. So these are negations or saying, saying the negative aspect of what they wanted. Now saying don't want, like, don't like, go, don't go. So these are the negative forms. So this is the fourth function of communication. The fifth function of communication is describing. For example, uh, Mama, I went to school, uh, today was very sunny, teacher was very angry, uh, but I finished my work. So, describing a event, describing a sequence of things, or describing something about how the weather was and how school was and all these, how the teacher was, these are descriptions. So, the, that is the fifth function of communication. Apart from this, questions can also be considered as a function of communication. So, when your child comes to you and asks, what is this? Uh, why is this like this? Uh, who is that? Why did they come? How to open this? So when your child asks you these kind of things, it's also the uh, sixth form of communication, which is uh, questions. So if you're doing functional communication therapy, or if you're just doing communication therapy, like what most of the speech pathologists are doing, and if you want to know if your uh, speech pathologist or speech therapist is doing doing communication therapy, and check out the link here and I've explained how you can choose a good speech therapist for your child. Um, check it out. If, so when you go to speech therapy or when your speech therapist is teaching you, you don't have to specifically look for this new uh, type of therapy called functional communication therapy and all that. What your therapist is already doing is communication training, is communication therapy. They are teaching your child how to express themselves. How to say what they want in what situation. So that is what is already happening and most of functional communication uh, I want to add is, is mostly done at home. 
So that's why as a speech therapist, even though I spend one to two hours a week with a child, I spend most of the time with the parent, teaching them what I'm teaching the child. So they can do the same thing at home so that it is more functional or it is more relevant to the child when it is happening in everyday life. So when within the clinic setting, if I teach a child, I want toy or I want ball, uh, that's not enough, right? Because it's only within the four walls of my uh, therapy room. But what about when they go out, when they go see another child, when they're talking to another child, instead of pulling the ball, they can also say, I want ball. So as a parent, you will facilitate this goal with the, uh, teaching this goal in everyday situations. So that is why this video is important because as parents you should know that whatever happens inside the therapy is not enough for the child's you know, complete development. As you should also be asking your therapist what are the goals, what I should do today, what are my activities. You should be you working on generalizing these skills in everyday life. These are the first five functional functions of communication. And you can take the sentence structures that I have said in this five steps and you can teach your child. So look at your child and see where is their communication level. Are they saying their wants and needs? Are they saying, the, are they giving other people instructions? So assess where your child is and from there you start working on making them say that, that specific phrase in that specific situation and many similar situations.